Hello everyone, and welcome to Nicole's Transgender Blog. Last week I started talking to you a little bit about my pathway. About five years since my operation, five years post-op. But I really didn't touch on my full pathway because I think everyone's path in transition is different. Mine was more like a rocket going towards the moon or a firework that was shooting off into the sky and may explode at any minute. And let me explain this, okay? So from my earliest memories, which were right around four years old when I had my tonsils out, I had a friend named Michelle. I was at her house playing with her. We were playing dress up and my mom got a little put off on it. And I don't know what her mom said. My mom told her that it would be, it would pass. It was just a friend I made in the hospital. I can't tell you much more and my mom has passed so I can't ask her. And I don't think my dad would remember it because he traveled a lot. And I just remember being in her apartment and going down to her house and uh, just being in her room and just trying on all the gorgeous dresses that she had. From that point on, I, I was looking at myself like I was wrong. There was something wrong with me. And I never could put a finger on it until I'd say around six or seven, I started just wishing every night I went to bed. But we would have to say prayers. We were Catholic. And uh, just praying to God that I would be made a girl. Time went on and uh, we moved forward. And no, I'm no longer living in New Jersey. I'm living on Long Island. And my brother catches me in one of my mom's skirts and uh, beats, the, beats the shit out of me. My mom comes home and pretty much uh, has... Uh, the ugliest words that you could say to somebody, are you gay? Is this what you want to do? You want to kiss men? Da, da, da. I want you out of my house. Uh, she didn't really kick me out. She sent me to live with my dad for a couple of weeks. Um, I went to my priest. I had to talk to him. He went through a ritual of holy water and incense and walking around me and praying and then had me pray. Catholic, it's fun, right? I'm still very religious regardless of that incident. But religious in a way that I believe in God and I believe in the morality things that were taught through religion. And I do have my relationship with Jesus and God. That's my own personal one. And I don't need a priest or a reverend or a rabbi or someone to tell me how to love myself and love my neighbor and love God. Regardless, that was my pathway. That time when I was 13, it taught me how to go stealth. But I did tell my girlfriends most of them except for two. My wife, who I married sometime after that, and my first fiance, who I just never got up the nerve to tell her, but I told everybody else before them. I played football for a little bit. I played hockey for a lot of it. I joined the Navy. I went into the Marine Corps. I did the right thing. I did all the things you're supposed to do to stay macho to be a man. I got to a certain point in my life and said, you know what, God isn't going to change me, but it didn't stop me from praying every night, even though I knew it was fruitless. And I went through life and I didn't go through life successfully, though I did get an amazing wife who I loved. And even though I'm like this, it doesn't change the fact that I loved her very much. In fact, even the things I said in divorce and because of the child um, custody case I had to fight her after I came after she found out I was transgender even that doesn't change the fact that I loved her immensely so my life took off when my ex and I started to fall away from each other and those days were kind of tough because it didn't happen immediately it happened over time my ex and I grew apart. We grew apart first because we had different financial goals and second because we had different living goals, different end goals. And she did what she should have done. She moved on. She did it before we were broken up, but she moved on. And I got to a point where there I was alone. And when other people like Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner before, 
was faced with that. They went and got another girlfriend and another wife and ruined their life and went on to another one and ruined their life and went on to another one and ruined their life. I did something different. I looked inside myself and I saw things I didn't like. I wasn't a great person as a male. I didn't succeed at many things, although I did succeed at some things. And all of my failures could be attributed to me spending all of my time on what I couldn't be and none of my time on what I could be. And the successes I had were sheer luck. So things happened in the divorce. Things came to pass in the, the divorce. And uh, I kind of had a failed attempted suicide, but there was no premeditation. There was no, let me take these things and end my life. It was more of a stumble into a suicide attempt. And it was during those initial months of being divorced and being alone and not being with your children and not having those certain rituals that you would go through happen and depression taking root and probably Zoloft taking over. And I had a bout with Ambien, um, 22 tablets. When I woke up in a puddle of throw up the next morning, I went and sought help. Initially, I was given somebody that was very religious, but I moved on from there. So right now we're in the October, November of 2009 period. 2010 comes, specifically the middle of January, and I start seeing a counselor that is very um, good at uh, helping those with gender dysphoria. In fact, she herself was one of the 0.2% or whatever it is that is intersexed. Um, for those of you watching this, not all of us are intersexed. In fact, a very tiny percentage are. Not all of us are double XY. Even a tinier percentage of the others are double XY. What we are is transgender. We have gender dysphoria. And it is something that is corrected through medical means, specifically gender confirmation surgery. So I started hormones in May of 2010. Went on real hormones with Dr. Vin Teng Precha of Emory University Hospital in November, October. I went to see him November. I got my hormones for the first time. Went full time as Nicole in January of 2011. And then had surgery, gender confirmation surgery, in August, specifically August 12th of 2012 at Thoric Memorial Hospital with Dr. Lauren Schechter. So that brought me all the way to the point where I had gender confirmation surgery. And even then, I didn't get it. Even then, I didn't become who I was. Even then, I was still lost. Even then, I had a far way to go. So where did I go from there? A lot of introspection. I had minor facial surgery. I had a revision. I had my surgery to reduce my Adam's apple. And still, I wasn't complete. Completeness didn't take surgeries. Completeness didn't take acceptance from others. Completeness didn't take having sex as a female, and I have done that twice. What completeness, what acceptance happened was when I accepted myself. That I am transgender. I'm a transgender female. From that day on, I've had successes. I'm back in school full time. I have a relationship with my children again. I'll never have a relationship with my ex again because she just is never going to accept me like this. And that's okay. That's her choice. And I had to accept that. So a lot of these things needed to be accepted. And as soon as I accepted me who for, for who I was, for what I was, my life got easier. My job got easier. I went back to school. And I am where I am right now. I love who I am. I'm so much better a person today than I was as that person before. And even though I'm a veteran of the Navy and the Marine Corps, 
and the Marines were the hardest thing I went through in that state. The last five years are probably the hardest five years of my life. And probably the most rewarding five years of my life to become who I was. There was a big, big, big um, influx, or I should say a large volume of videos that came from me during my initial transition. And then all those important times when I was doing that introspection, that self-introspection, there was nothing. And I feel sorry for that because I think that many of you are going to follow my pathway if you're in my age group and going through transition. But today, I feel complete. But I announced here that I'm seeking more surgeries. I'm not seeking surgeries because it's going to make me more feminine. I'm not seeking surgeries because it's going to suddenly pass a magic wand over me and make me accepted by other people and them not to see me as male or transgender or different. And to be honest, I don't know if I'd want that. I mean, I'd either want to go through life again as totally female or totally male and not have to go through this. But because I am here, because there are going to be others after me, those that aren't accepted by their families early on and given the opportunity to transition like so many children are now. I want them to be able to look at me and use my path to help them determine their own path, which will be different than mine. So I am seeking surgeries, voice feminization surgery. Why? Because I want it. Liposuction of the midsection, specifically the waist, and uh, fat added to my Botox, my butt, and my hips. Why? I want female pants to fit a little bit better, and that's it. Are these going to make everything perfect? Hell no. Are they going to make people accept me? Hell no. What's going to make people accept me is my acceptance and my reluctance to let their non-acceptance, their, their disapproval of me, not affect me to where eventually it becomes, hey, I'm just another person. Today I sat across from a professor who's very Southern, Christian, who loves the baby Jesus, conservative, but not so much so as he's a Republican, but he's a conservative. And we are able to see eye to eye. And we were able to see eye to eye. And he was able to accept me. Why? Because I am a wonderful person. Why? Because I am an amazing person. Why? Because me, I'm me. I'm Nicole D'Angelo. So I'm putting these videos out there again. This part of my life where I'm going to go through these next couple of surgeries. And the part of my life where maybe I can help other people. There's so many spokespeople out there for the transgender community, but there aren't spokespeople for every one of your transition pathways. The only spokesperson on that pathway is you. So by taking in all of what people have to say, I hope you make your own pathway. Well, folks, there's a lot in my life that's great. There's a few things that aren't so good. But all in all, I'm better for the path I've walked. I'm better for the turmoil, for the heartbreak, and for the bad things that happened in my transition. And I'm better for the good. I made the best friend in the whole world through transition, my best friend Sarah. And I lost a couple of people, my brother, and my ex, who I thought would be my friend and is not. But you know what? I'm making new friends. And every day I'm out there, I know that I'm the first transgender person that somebody has seen, the first one that someone has talked to, the first one that someone has interacted with. And all I'm projecting from now on is that I love myself. So let's talk a little bit about that loving myself part. I may not be active sexually right now, but my parts are definitely active 
Thank you so much, Dr. Schechter, for giving me parts that work amazingly well. Too well in certain respects, but amazingly well. But I'm pulled back from this seeking actively of people that I want to be with forever. There's people out there, a person out there, that I'm talking to, and they know who they are. And I wish more could happen. But that may happen later on. For now, this part of my life is about me. It's about making me the best me I can be. And I'm going to use these videos also to show me how I went through this part of my life. And hopefully you get something out of them. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your suggestions. Thank you for the negative comments. Bring them. I'll read them all. You know, sometimes I'm pompous. Sometimes I'm stupid. Sometimes I'm asinine. Sometimes I'm arrogant. But most of the time, I'm truthful, honest, to the same words, right? Open, too open in many respects, and willing to adjust. Well, folks, that's this week's Transgender Blog. I'm Nicole D'Angelo, and I'm signing off. So thank you for watching and listening, and hopefully you put some great comments here. I love you all, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.